everyone. Hello, hello. I thought that since we are very close to the end, I would just start with a personal note and thank all of you um, for who you are and for what you've done. I go to a lot of meetings throughout the year, and most of it is moans and groans about problems and stuff that doesn't work. And then I come here, and all I hear is about solutions, and all I see is action. It's fantastic. Thank you so much. I have a great pleasure of introducing a young man who I realized when I was talking to him um, is sort of the human embodiment of resilience, as is everybody else on this platform and in this room. He is a young man from South Sudan, a dedicated peace builder, driven by his experience as a refugee who has spent now almost 17 years in the Kakuma refugee camp in Kenya. With five years experience in peace building and conflict resolution, he employs a multifaceted approach to promote lasting peace in his community. He, his, works, his work includes conflict mediation and resolution, peace education and awareness campaigns, community empowerment initiatives, collaboration with organizations and fellow peace activists, and advocacy for peaceful coexistence and the UN Sustainable Development Goals. His efforts have resulted in reduced conflict, changed attitudes towards peace, and have resulted in empowered individuals within the camp. And he has created an NGO called Prime Demand Solutions. Having, experienced, having personally experienced challenges and conflict during his time in the camp, he brings a deep personal connection to advocacy. Looking ahead, he plans to expand his peace-building initiatives, strengthen collaboration, advocate for peace on global platforms, mentor young peace builders, and work towards reconciliation efforts in South Sudan. His engagement extends to NGOs and government agencies where he collaborates to enhance the impact of his projects and advocate for peace and conflict resolution. Through the One Young World platform, he aims to amplify the voices of young leaders, foster collaboration and networking, advocate for peace and social change, inspire youth, and expand his peace-building activities regionally with the support of the platform's extensive network. Please welcome Dengdak Malwal. Imagine for a moment, living for years without a true sense of home. Imagine you have limited access to such basic needs as clean water, education, and health care. This has been my reality for the past 16 years. Since I was 13 years old, I have been living in Kakuma refugee camp in Kenya, in a house made of mud. In truth, Kakuma is more of a city than a camp, because it is home to 250,000 refugees and asylum seekers. Kakuma was set up after 20,000 children fled the second Sudanese Civil War in 1992. Since then, the refugees have kept coming. Life in this camp is a daily battle. While the physical conflict might have been left behind, the psychological and emotional scars remain. In Kakuma today, refugees are from at least eight different war-torn African countries. We live together, each carrying our own stories of loss and pain. But in such a diverse environment, conflict can arise from differences in culture, background, and limited resources. 
I remember a wave of clash in 2014 within the camp that left several people dead. My country, South Sudan, has witnessed over two million people driven out by conflict, contributing to the staggering 35 million worldwide. As a 13 years old child, I witnessed the devastating consequences of conflict. Violence and fear torn through our communities, uprooting families, and forcing us to flee our homes. For two weeks, I walked through bush with strangers as a lone child after being separated from my family. And to survive, I was eating any fruit, even the most bitter. Many people fell down, exhausted, and died in the bush from starvation. I could not sleep for fear of being left behind. But eventually, I found a UN vehicle, and they dropped me to Kakuma, which has been my home ever since. Yet within this camp, I have found purpose in my role as a community leader. This journey led me to create Prime Demand Solution, a youth-led organization that addresses food security, climate change, and youth empowerment in refugee community. We have introduced sport programs and agricultural initiatives that provide practical skills for Kakuma residents and foster a sense of unity that bridges cultural differences. We empower them to take control of their life. The impact has been profound. We have helped over a thousand refugees from diverse backgrounds. <laughs> the mood in Kakuma has improved as the focus of so many people's life has shifted from mere survival to self-improvement and collective growth. This new mindset has changed the way that people behave to each other, reducing violence and bettering living conditions for everyone. But our work is far from over. In 2023, camps for displaced people are full of risk. UN Women Africa has reported that 15 to 20 cases of rape and physical assaults are reported in Kakuma every month. Amnesty International has also highlighted that LGBTI refugees in the camp are at risk of rape and extreme violence. We who live in refugee camps deserve to live in safety and to have equal opportunity to reach our potentials in life. Please ask yourself, what could I do to help the victim of war and conflict have a peaceful night? In communities like Kakuma, diverse nationalities and ethnicities are forced to coexist in challenging conditions with scarce resources. This is a mirror on all of humanity and our ability to live as one. So, if we can bring peace to Kakuma, we can definitely bring peace to the world. Thank you.